Hi, I'm Dima Cizewski, Chief Architect of Drio Protocol. In our previous video, we described the Drio Nodes trustline related database structure in detail. We encourage you to watch it first so you can better understand the actual trustline operation mechanics described in this video. We will now consider the actual trustline operation processes, which include opening, setting, and closing a trustline as well as changing it during a course of payment operations. But before we start, we need to make a small but important remark. It may seem that a trust line is a single entity, but from a technical point of view, it is a bit more complicated. First, there is a communication channel that enables all the operations with a trust line, bears communication cryptography, etc. And second, there is a trust line itself, which is essentially a set of basic numbers, incoming trust amount, outgoing trust amount, and current balance. The trust line also contains a part of cryptography responsible for ensuring trust line data integrity. That's why, before opening an actual trust line, we need to open a communication channel. First of all, a communication channel between two nodes must be open that will allow this node to open any number of trust lines between them in different equivalents. Suppose node A wants to open a channel to node B. To do so, node A has to know B's Geo node address. This could be obtained by several different ways outside the protocol, so we will not describe them here. Then, node A calls the command to open the communication channel to node B. During the course of this, an entry that contains information about node B is created and recorded in the contractor's table of nodes A database. And the result of this command will be a generated cryptographic secret key that node A has to pass to node B in this or some other way. There are several possible options to do so, which would not be described here. Note that, in the course of the secret key exchange process, A and B also exchange each other's identification values, since each node has its own identification sequence number with which it identifies its counterparty. These values will be recorded into the ID on contractor side field of each node's trust lines table. Having received the secret key, node B creates a similar set of entries about its counterparty and the trust line and records them into its own database. After that, B sends a confirmation to A encrypted with the secret key that it has just received. In fact, from this moment, on all communication between these two nodes will be encrypted with this secret key. A trust line can be opened only if a communication channel is already exists between these two nodes. A single trust line can be set up in only one equivalent. To open a trust line, the user of node A has to call a command. The command must contain the contractor's ID and an equivalent in which this trust line will perform its transactions. As a result of this command, node A creates an entry in the trust lines table that will be linked to the trust line contractor, the node B. The relevant information about the contractor is stored in the contractor's table. After that, A generates a particular number of Lampert key pairs. This number is 1024 by default, but could be changed in the node's configuration save them into the own keys table with the link to the newly created trust line and marks all these keys as valid. After that, A sends all the public keys to node B and waits for the confirmation. It is worth to mention that each key is sent with a separate message. From this point, every private key will be used only once to sign every new data set and after that will be marked as invalid. For the counterparty to be able to check the sender's signature validity, the sender must submit a sequence number pertaining to its key pair alone with the signature, so the recipient can use the correct corresponding public key to validate it. After the check has been performed, the recipient also marks the used public key of the sender as invalid. Node B gets A's first public key and performs an operation of trust line creation on each side which is similar to that described above. Then, it stores the key in its contractor keys table and waits for the rest of the keys. When the node B gets all of A's keys, it performs a similar key generation and exchange process. 
After the mutual key generation and exchange is complete, A forms an initial audit, signs it with the first valid key from its key pool and submits the audit to B. ITA, OTA and CB values equal zero in the initial audit. Also, the initial audit contains the address hash of the network-wide register of equivalents, so that both nodes can be sure that the equivalent ID from the registry they are using corresponds to the same actual equivalent. If the address does not match for both nodes, the trust line cannot be opened. See the previous video. As node B gets the initial audit, it checks its data as well as A's signature for validity. If everything is OK, B signs the same audit with its private key, stores it and sends it back to A. At node's B side, the trust line opening is now concluded, so B changes its state from init to active. As node A gets the response from B, it performs similar checks, stores the audit in case of success and sets the trust line status to active as well. Note that payments and trust line changing operations are possible only when the trust line state is set to active. That concludes the trust line's opening sequence. In fact, all a particular node can do with a trust line is to change, increase or decrease, including decreasing it down to zero, its outgoing trust, OTA, and to close its incoming trust, ITA. Despite the different economic meanings, all of these operations are done in a similar way. Now we'll move on and describe the mechanics. The node that initiates an operation with a trust line first of all records the changes to the ITA and or OTA values, depending on current TL balance, on its own side. Then it sends all three values, ITA, OTA and CB, with its signature to its trust line's counterparty. The other node checks the sender's signature and, if it is OK, changes its own corresponding values to the new ones that it just received before sending its signatures back to the initiator. When the first node gets the reply, it knows that the new values are accepted. The audit is complete. We just want to stress here that in the course of operations with a trust line, a node can only make any changes to its OTA and particular change to its ITA close it, and no change to CB, since current balance can be changed only as a result of a payment. The procedure will be described in a minute. Technically, of course, a node can make any changes to its own database, even changes to the current balance, but, and this is really important, due to the two-sided validation procedure, a one-sided change would be rejected by the counterparty node on the same trust line. Now, it's time to explain what an audit is and when it happens. Essentially, an audit is the current state fixation of the three basic trust line properties ITA, OTA, CB. This fixation is complete when both sides have signed it. Along with this data, an audit also contains a sequence number stored in the number field of the audits table. That is the same for both trust lines counterparties. Also, it contains the registry of equivalence address hash. During an audit process, a trust line status is set to audit pending. An audit is performed in the following three cases. During a trust line opening process, initial audit, when a change to a trust line occurs, and or when triggered by an audit rule. Audit rules are connected with payments. Every node can set its own audit rule for each of its trust lines. These rules could be the following. Time is up. A certain time period could be set and an audit will be performed at the end of this period. Number of payment transactions is reached. A user can set a certain number of payment transactions and an audit will be performed after the number is reached. The total sum of outgoing payment receipts exceeds the outgoing trust amount or the total sum of incoming payment receipts exceeds the incoming trust amount. Now, for better understanding of what the audit is, how it is done and what audit rules are, we will consider an example. In this example, we will also explain how the current balance is calculated 
since an audit is directly related to this particular trust line property. While ITA and OTA are not dependent on any other trust line component, since they are user-defined, the current balance value is calculated by adding all incoming credits values and deducting all outgoing credits values to and from the value of the last signed audits CB. In this formula, CBA is a value of the last signed audits CB. IRP are incoming payments receipts, ORP are outgoing payment receipts. Suppose node A opens a trust line channel to node B. Initially, all values of all properties of both sides of this trust line equal 0, and the audit number is also 0. Now, node B opens a trust line for 100 units, so its OTA value becomes 100, and the ITA value of node A becomes 100 as well. This action triggers an audit that fixes the current state of the trust line properties. Also, one of the nodes sets a second audit rule with a value of 3 transactions. Now, node A makes a payment of 50 units to node B. This will be reflected in entries in the outgoing payment receipts table of node A as well as in the incoming payment receipts table of node B. As you can see, the current balance hasn't changed yet. But this means that it is still unchanged in the database and will remain so until the next audit is done. However, for the end user and for other internal processes, the CB value will be immediately shown as up-to-date, calculated according to the above-mentioned formula. So, in our case, the CB of node A will be calculated as shown here and CB for node B will be like this. That means that node B now has the possibility of paying to node A within a limit of 50 units, despite the fact that there is no incoming trust amount for B, but such a payment is made possible because now B owes A 50 units on this trust line. So, node B uses this possibility to repay 20 units to A. Now we have a new receipt 20 units in the incoming payment receipts table of node A and another 20 units receipts in the outgoing payment receipts table of node B. And here are the new current CB value for the nodes. And now we have another payment of 60 units from A to B that will also be reflected in the payment receipts tables accordingly. And the current CB value of the nodes will be like this. Now we can see that we have three transactions. That means that set audit rule must be triggered. An audit means a final current balance calculation according to the formula, signing the resulting value of CB as well as the current values of ITA and OTA by both parties and storing all of this data in the database. The audit also allows us to drop all the receipts that were used for the latest CB calculation. In other words, previous records from the incoming payment receipts and outgoing payment receipts tables that were accumulated since the latest audit. Finally, we will do another payment to demonstrate how the new CB value is calculated based on a non-zero previous CB value. So, B pays 70 units to A. Here is how it will affect the values. As we mentioned above, a node generates a particular number of Lampert key pairs during the trust line channel opening process. In the course of this walk, a node constantly uses these keys for signing receipts and audits. When a node's number of unused own keys reaches a critical number, 3 by default, the process for new own key pool generation is initiated. It consists of the following actions. Node marks all remaining unused own private keys as invalid. It generates new set of key pairs and saves them into its own keys table. Sends the public key from the first newly generated pair to the counterparty of this particular trust line and waits for confirmation. Having received the confirmation, it repeats action 3 for the next generated key until it sends all of them. The contractor on its side performs the following actions. 
Having received the first message with the new key, it marks all remaining public keys of its contractor as invalid. Save the received contractor's public key into its the contractor keys table. Send the confirmation to the trust line counterparty about the key received. Repeat action 2 and 3 for every subsequent key it receives. If for some reason the new key pool generation automation wasn't triggered, a node could use all its keys from the current pool, so it would not be able to make any new changes and or payments on this trust line. In this case, the user has the ability to launch the needed key pool generation command manually. When a cryptography check is performed during an action like an audit, for instance, a situation could happen where the check fails, for instance, when audit data is incorrect or a signature is invalid. We call this a conflict. In this case, the trust line state is changed to conflict resolving. A node that finds such a discrepancy initiates a conflict resolving process. It consists of the following actions. Node synchronizes the trust line's data that is stored in its operative memory with the relevant data from its database. It forms a message that contains all the data relevant to current audit. It is the audit itself and all corresponding debt receipts. Then it sends the message to its contractor on this trust line. Having received this message, the contractor node also synchronizes its operative memory with its own database. Then the contractor compares its own data with the data that it just got from its counterparty in a bit to figure out the source of the conflict. When the conflict source is identified, it tries to judge whose data is correct. Variant 1. If the receiving node decides that the sending node data is correct, then it implements this data version on its side and sends back the confirmation. Variant 2. Otherwise, it sends back its own version of the data. If the sending node gets the confirmation, the conflict is resolved. The trust line state is changed back to active. If it gets the new data, it tries to perform the correctness check. If the data is correct, it implements it and sends the confirmation to its counterparty. Otherwise, the trust line state changes to the conflict. The conflict state can only be resolved outside of the protocol. Closing a trust line essentially means that all three of its basic properties, ITA, OTA, CB, equal zero, and this state is confirmed by an audit. Now, let's discuss how this could happen. Every user can only close two of these properties, ITA and or OTA. Both of these properties could be closed by one of the two parties or by both of them. But even if incoming and outgoing trust amounts are closed equal to zero, a trust line could remain active if the current balance is anything other than zero. In this case, the trust line will continue to function until the payments and or possible clearing cycles bring it to zero. The outstanding balance will be repaid in this or other way. So, when all three trust line properties equal zero, the trust line state will be set to archived, but the trust line channel won't be deleted from the database. It will only contain data for the last audit. Thus, if the two users want to renew the trust line, the channel will be there already, so there will be no need to create it again. Now, you should know how trust lines in Geo protocol operate. Our next videos will describe the procedures that should be performed before the payment can be complete.